All right, now a very pleasant good day to each and every one of you. I'm Brother James, and I greet you one more time in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. We are studying the Bible book of Revelation. We are beginning in this lesson, chapter number eight, Revelation chapter number eight. And the Bible says, and when he had opened the seventh seal, you recall we had six seals in chapter six, then an interval for some uh, supplementary material in chapter seven, and now the opening of the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. So what follows now are seven trumpets which are contained within the seventh seal, which is why we said these are uh, consecutive events, not overlapping events. L let me give you some, some big picture here before we press into the chapter proper. There's a parallel between the seven trumpets found in chapters 8 through 11 and the seven vials detailed in chapter 16. The first in each has to do with the earth. Chapter 8, verse 1 to 7. Chapter 16, verse 1 to 2. The second has to do with the sea. Chapter 8, verses 8 and 9. Chapter 16, verse 3. The third has to do with the rivers, 8, verses 10 and 11, 16, verses 4 through 7. The fourth, with the heavens, chapter 8, verses 12 to 13, chapter 16, verses 8 and 9. Then uh, under the fifth, mankind is tormented, chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, chapter 16, verses 10 and 11. Under the sixth, armies and the Euphrates River, chapter 9, verses 13 to 21, chapter 16, verses 12 to 16. And then the seventh, Nations in Wrath, chapter 11, verses 15 to 19, chapter 16, verses 17 through 21. The trumpets differ from the seals in one important respect. They are not strictly speaking, supernatural. The anguish and horror of the period during which they run their lawful course are the results of human ambition, human hatred, cruelty, and improvidence. All God does is remove restraint by taking away the church, the salt which holds back the full working of the leaven, according to Matthew 5.13, and, and when the righteous body of Christ is taken away, when the salt of the earth is taken away, when the lights of the world are taken away, then these events take place all by themselves. This is, this is why the world has never fully and never will fully appreciate the presence of saved people, the New Testament church, things are, are going to get very, very bad once we're gone. For possibly the first time in human history, unregenerate human nature will not be hindered. Peace is a divine quality. In the sealed judgments, peace is taken from the earth. The natural man is a hero worshiper, and in the first seal, he gets a hero. The natural man is a worshiper of force, of military achievement. In the second seal, he gets his fill of blood. Two natural consequences follow, famine and pestilence. The natural man fancies himself competent to overturn uh, civil government and establish a millennium by law and social organization. In the sixth seal, He's given the scope for his calamitous experiment. The worst tyranny the earth ever saw is not so awful as anarchy. But now, but now, in the trumpet judgments, 
the supernatural enters the scene. This is not God taking away his restraining hand, but God applying his hand, a handful of the weapons of his warfare. And it's so terrible. It's so terrible. That first verse said, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. This is, of all the calms before the storm, this is the greatest calm before the greatest storm. You know, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 20 speaks of a, of a quiet of sorts. Habakkuk 2 and verse 20. Let me get back there and read it to you. Zephaniah... Almost there, closing in. <laughs> these, these little pages are turning. There we go. Habakkuk 2, verse 20. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. There's a, there's a call for a time when the earth will be quieted. In Isaiah 41, and verse number one, keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. So they're the islands, the Gentile nations. They are said to be silent or quiet. In Zechariah 2 and verse number 13, Zechariah 2.13 13, be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord. For he is raised up out of his holy habitation. So there's coming a day when all the earth and all the islands and all flesh shall be called upon to be silent before God. That silence reaches even into the realm of heaven. 30 minutes. The praise stops, the worship stops, all of that celebrating we read about in chapters 4 and 5 and 7, it all comes to a halt when that seventh seal is opened. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 7 says, Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. For the day of the Lord is at hand. That's the second coming of Christ. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice. He hath bid his guests. The silence makes the terrible character of the coming storm all the more impressive. So fearful and so awful is even this initial retribution, which is about to be inflicted upon the wicked that the inhabitants of heaven stand in, in shock. Uh, they, they, they don't know what to say. They, they have no words for what they're seeing. They're, they're frozen in this moment of time, if you will, half an hour in breathless amazement. Now, half an hour is not a long time in itself, but time is longer or, shorting, uh, longer or shorter according to what is transpiring. Moments of agonizing suspense stretch out into what seems hours or days in comparison with moments in ordinary life. Two minutes of delay when a man is drowning is an awful period to have to wait. If I were preaching and halted for three or four minutes, it would seem like an intolerable interval when on the margin of the realization of great expectations or uh, interrupted in the midst of what has been absorbing the most intense interest of the soul, every instant of delay seems long indeed. Now consider the circumstances of this case. Praise and worship and celebration like no one's ever seen or experienced. Then the condition of the world after those six seal judgments. And then the Lord, as if you will, rolls up his sleeve 
and exposes his arm, strong and mighty, but this time not to save, but to destroy. And, and the visage, the visage of the Lord shifts from the sacrificial lamb receiving the praise of those that he has, has saved and redeemed, and now that face is covered with the expression denoting the wrath of the lamb. And when you think of the number of people this pause affects and what lies in the balance, there's every reason to understand that this half hour is a space of time so tremendous that we may be sure there was no delay like it in all of Bible history. So these seven angels, verse 2, which stood before God, to them were given seven trumpets. There's probably some connection between the seven chamberlains who served in the presence of Azuerus in Ezra 1.10 to these seven angels standing in the presence of God, but I, I can't make the connection. I just make the suggestion. The seven trumpet judgments of chapters 8 through 11 affect the various parts of the universe, the land, the sea, etc. Nowhere, nowhere will there be any safety for the wicked. A certain order is evident. The first four trumpet judgments harm the wicked in their physical being. The last three bring the added dimension of spiritual anguish when hell itself will be let loose. Now, trumpets are most expressive instruments, as I'm sure you know. Their voice is the most significant in the Bible. God himself gave his ancient people very special directions with regard to the use of a trumpet. It is itself described as a cry, and this cry is related to important occasions. The time for blowing of trumpets was always a time for men to bestir themselves in one way or another. Each use of trumpets in the Old Testament points to something which is found in connection with the great tribulation and the coming of Christ, as laid out in Revelation 8 through 11. For example, trumpets are connected with war. Numbers chapter 10 and verse number 9. Let's read that together. Numbers chapter 10 and the ninth verse. And if you go to, to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. Also Jeremiah 4 same idea, Jeremiah chapter 4 and the 19th verse. Let me get over there, 419. My bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Destruction upon destruction is cried. For the whole land is spoiled, suddenly my tent, are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. So there it is, the trumpet sounding the alarm for war, and that certainly fits the context of Revelation 8. Trumpets were also for the convocation of the people and the moving of the camps of Israel. This is minutely prescribed in Numbers chapter 8. And this would connect with the flight of the remnant moving all at once into the wilderness to that hiding place prepared for them by God. Trumpets also proclaimed great festivals. The sacrifices, the offerings, the Sabbaths, the holy convocations, the jubilee, and atonement were all announced by the sounding of the trumpet. Numbers 10, verse 10. Back to that book. Numbers chapter 10 and verse number 10. Also in the day of your gladness 
and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your month, she shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I am the Lord your God. Also, we find in Leviticus 23, Leviticus 23 and verse um, 24, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, and the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation, 25.9, same book, Leviticus. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And you can look also at 2 Chronicles 29, verse 27. As those wonderful shadows are about to give way to the express image, we would expect the sounding of trumpets. Trumpets also had to do with the announcement of royalty. Zadok, the priest, and Nathan, the prophet, were directed to anoint Solomon king over Israel to blow with the trumpet and to say, God save King Solomon. They are also found in connection with the announcement that Jehu was king, 1 Kings, uh, 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 13. As these seven trumpets conclude with the coming of King Jesus, we have another match. Trumpets are also associated with the manifestation of the terrible majesty and power of God. You remember when the Lord appeared to Moses on Mount Sinai? There was the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. That's Exodus 19 and verse 16. Amos said, the blowing of the trumpet in the city made the people afraid, Amos 3, 6. When one considers the events following each of these seven trumpets, it is certainly plain that fear is in order. And then trumpets are also used in the Old Testament in connection with the overthrow of the ungodly. It was at the blowing of the trumpets that the walls of Jericho fell down and the accursed city fell into the hands of Joshua, Joshua chapter 6. And so we see that these judgments in Revelation 8, 9, 10, 11, they take place in a time when the accursed city, Revelation 18, falls before the power of the second Joshua, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to have seven trumpet judgments. And those seven trumpet judgments will connect us to war, the, the issuing forth or the, the time for holy days, uh, great uh, gathering and moving in unison of God's people. Royalty is arriving, praise the Lord the terrible majesty and power of God which makes men afraid, and then the overthrow of the ungodly and the casting down of their cities. So we certainly see throughout the Old Testament the use of trumpets points us forward to these trumpet judgments found in these middle chapters of the book of Revelation. We'll pick up right there next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for letting your friends know about these Bible lessons on the book of Revelation. Until next time, I'm Brother James. May the Lord richly bless you and good day.